Hello and welcome, Breakthrough Success listeners. I'm your host, Mark Guberti, and this is the podcast where you'll learn how to achieve the breakthroughs you've been looking for in your business and life. If you want to grow your content brand, you'll definitely want to add my latest book, Content Marketing Secrets, to your reading list. This book will teach you how to create, promote, and optimize your content for growth and revenue. You can get your copy at Mark Guberti, that is Mark with a C, so markguberti.com slash book. And now, let's dive right into the show. For episode 79 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast, we are going to talk about using faith to drive our success with our guest, Isabel Hunt. Isabel is a certified vision and transformation coach, speaker, and author of the book, The Power of Faith-Driven Success. In the book, she teaches people how they can live their dreams. She passionately supports young adults to create, live, and transform their lives by understanding the scientific and spiritual connections between their heart and their brain, and by discovering their unique and magical gifts hidden within. And now, it is my pleasure to welcome Isabel to the show. Thank you for having me, Mark. Isabel, it is such a pleasure to have you on the Breakthrough Success Podcast. And before we go really deep into using faith to drive our success, I'd love to get some background. So what first got you interested in studying faith-driven success? Um, that's actually quite a, an interesting story. For one, um, for those, I want to give a little bit of a background. For those who don't know, I am actually considering myself an empath warrior. So I work a lot with, with highly sensitive people. And what makes us different is that our mirror neurons are differently wired than um people in general we well it's not just we are able to empathize with people um but we we become them it's almost like we can switch into different roles we can feel what they feel and it becomes ours and so over time growing up i always felt like um like an outsider like i had had different visions i had different dreams and um, and then my whole story started when I was about 12 years old. I had this dream that one day I would be moving to the United States. I'm originally from Germany. Um, and I saw myself speaking in front of thousands of people. And, and I didn't even understand what I was saying, because at that point, I really sucked in English, to be honest, like I hated it in school. Um, so I was like, okay, whatever. But there was just this drive on my heart. And then at 18, I actually did come to the U.S. for an exchange year. And then I went back to Germany. And every day, every single day, every single minute, I had this dream in front of my eyes. I knew I was I was called to do something different. I never felt like I fit in. I had to do something um, that is outside of my comfort zone. And so I went and, and started studying economics. I got kicked out of university. I'm going to make that short. Um, then I started over with social science and psychology. And then I came back to the U.S. And that was a whole mess in and of itself. I almost got deported. I had to go to Canada. I came back and all those things um, that happen when you don't want to do anything illegal. <laughs> you have to jump over a couple hoops. And within this whole um, time frame of how much was 15 years probably, um, I realized how what faith really means. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm really talking about spirituality. Faith meaning the knowing, the understanding that when you are clear on what you want, it is going to happen. And with that knowing, I had to learn about my mindset. I had to learn about what it means to be an empath, what it means to really start a movement, and what it means how to trust myself. Faith only comes by trusting ourselves. And throughout this whole journey that I had to go through, and then finally at the age of um, 28, I, I met my amazing husband, and we have been married for seven years now. And uh, when, when things started to work out, that's when I had to look back like, ah, I really didn't trust myself. I didn't trust my intuition. And that is part of having faith. And that's how I started this whole journey and the movement that I'm on now. Isabel, thank you for sharing with us that backstory of what got you interested in faith-driven success. And you mentioned something really important, that faith is uh, our ability to trust ourselves in a certain mm -hmm. sense. 
And when we have these big goals and we pursue them, but things don't go our way, we can lose that faith. We can lose the trust in ourselves to accomplish those goals. So how can we stay faithful even when we confront challenges and it seems like a goal is slowly becoming out of grasp? (laughs) Um, That is going back to really listening to your body and connecting to your soul. We all have a soul and our soul, our heart is communicating with us very clearly in which path to go or where we are out of alignment with who we truly are. We call it in coaching essence, our core, um, the perfect DNA, literally, that is who we really are at our core. And um, what helped me a lot is to redefine my understanding to emotions. What are emotions? How do they show up? What is the actual message? Because we have so many things that we started to label in our society and boxed up and we're supposed to overcome fear and we can be angry and all those things where it's really not true about how our body and our soul is communicating with us. It's all about how much are we in alignment and that is reflected in how we feel. So really, um, it is about learning, like Anything you ever start, you have to, or or anywhere where you ever want to go, like the end goal even, um, you have to start with the inward work. If you learn to really be content within and still with that passion and the drive to move forward, but really being able to tune in with yourself and to clearly listen Um, you will always find that next step. I think nowadays it is um, something that I want to mention, especially that I know you're younger and I talk to a lot of younger people, at least younger than me. (laughs) Um, I I talk, I speak in front of a lot of younger people and we see in, in, in your generation and younger, but also in my generation, a lot, a huge awakening. And so The intuition part, if you really want to become successful in what you want to do, that is on your heart. The intuition part becomes more and more important. How my coach always tells me, Isabel, you're a renegade. You will never do things like anyone else. And that is something that that I want to tell younger people, especially. You will never do things like everyone else because you have a different purpose a different calling in this world. You're a generation that is awakening, that is so purpose-driven instead of so money-driven that older generation still, um, the way they grew up. I hope that answered the question. (laughs) Isabel, thank you for sharing those great insights on being able to stay faithful even though as we confront some of the challenges around us. And it's not just being able to preserve our faith that matters. It's also being able to expand on what we already have in order to uh, inspire more action and purpose behind our action. So once we have a certain amount of faith in our ability to accomplish goal and just in our abilities in general, how can we build upon our faith? It's a continuous practice. Every time you reach a certain level, you're called to to reach another level. And I'm just meaning level when it comes to our own journey, because really, we have to be careful, especially in today's world, that we compare ourselves. Oh, they they are on, on this level and they're on that level and they are so far ahead of me or they're celebrities. At the same time, at, at the same time, we all operate on the same platform, on the same level but our own path had to, has different levels does that make sense yes it does okay so um every time we reach a certain point we are internally being pushed to take it to the next level that's what i'm saying um uh if you have read the alchemist it's an amazing book um where he talks about your heart never stops talking to you. No matter how much you try to ignore it, it's always coming back. And at times it gets louder and louder and louder until you finally take the actions. Uh, You might start to feel worse. You might start to feel totally confused and restless and maybe even anxious and panicky. But that is just a message for you to know, oh, 
I am actually not quite going the direction I know I'm supposed to go. So when you get to the point where even you become complacent, you know you need to take it to the next level. And the next level for greater success actually means going deeper within. And I really, I definitely, if you go deep within, you could really learn a lot about yourself and tap into your true whys of and purpose of mm. the actions that you're performing. And I was wondering if you could go a little deeper into how faith connects with success, because for some people, this is a new concept. For others, this is a uh, concept they already know. But yeah. I would really love to hear your thoughts on how faith connects with success. Faith is success. <laughs> um, that That is what I really, truly believe. Um, if you don't have faith, again, faith equals trust. If you don't trust in anything you're supposed to do or that you're called to do or any any of your abilities or skills, you will never get anywhere. I always say, um, especially trust is connected to your heart. And in my book, I describe how your heart physically is wired and how your brain physically is wired. And what we know is that your heart is considered your second brain, right? But your heart responds to the vibration of emotions that's coming at you. So for example, you're in a situation, um, something's happening, it doesn't even matter really what it is, but maybe it's something sad or something that upsets you. You feel the emotion connected to what is happening before your conscious mind is even understanding what's going on. Your conscious mind reacts about five seconds after your subconscious mind is already understanding what's going on. So your emotions are the most important that are connected to your faith. So when you take a look um, and how your body works, we have to take a very clear look at our emotional world and what that really means and how they work and, and um, how with the messages behind each of them. So you have to understand that everything is a vibration. We know that now scientifically proven, everything is a vibration. So um, faith is a high vibration. Um, like when you know, when you trust, trust is, is a high vibration. Um, no, I'm missing the word. <sighs> stage that you're in or state that you're in, like a, a the, the state that you're in, trust is very high vibrational. You, you increase your body vibration. That means that you're spiritually more connected, meaning you actually are able to receive more clear uh, visions or messages or signs from the outside that you understand in what direction to go. So it's all about faith equals trust equals the vibration that we experience from the outside and what we send out again and that is connected to our emotional world i hope i described that clearly <laughs> <laughs> you definitely i mean that's a lot of great insights on how faith connects with success and i mean looking at faith as the basic level of trust you definitely need to trust your abilities in order to yeah. pursue those big goals and achieve that success and let's say that Someone has faith, someone is uh, pushing really hard to achieve his or her, her goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some moments, like it's easier to work than others. And for those days when we're not feeling as much ready to work or uh, different challenges come up, how can mm -hmm. we get more inspired to continue putting in the work on our way towards our dreams? Okay. I... I actually want to respond to that a little differently because what can happen or what is often the case, we know that over 90% of our um, emotional, spiritual, and physical challenges that we experience are connected to trapped emotions. So even if you have faith, um, but most likely if things don't work out and you get really frustrated, then you're lacking some 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 faith <laughs> there like you're lacking in you lacking um having faith or trusting in the process of where you're at and looking at a what do i actually have to learn in where i'm at right now or what do i have to let go of but in most cases and i have worked with again over i don't even know 400 people probably over the last five years um, it was always the root cause when they get stuck, when things don't work out, when when it gets rough and they just feel like, oh, my gosh, I don't know how to 
jump over that hump or get over that obstacle. It is related to some kind of trapped emotions. And um, what happens, I describe it a little bit so you understand what I'm talking about. If everything is energy, our body is as well. We are made of atoms. So when you take a really close look, um, it's all little atoms. And they even have done research when someone had their hand amputated, they still feel their hand. And the energy field of the hand is still visible with whatever technology they use. Um, so the energy field is still visible off the hand, even though the physical hand is not there. It's just the density um, that determines if there's a hand or not. And if you take it off, it's gone. So um, everything is a free flow or is supposed to. If it's perfect, it's free flowing within your body. And so are your emotions. So when you get stuck, what can happen that you hit a trigger for example, it could be something that you've learned from your parents or you may have it's something that you inherited through um, the birth process. I have a video on my YouTube channel about how your birth process or the, the birthing process actually influences your success today. So if anyone is interested in deeper knowledge about that, go and check out the video on YouTube. Um, but what happens is at, even at young age, we can something feel really intensely and we're not aware and then at some point it gets stuck within our body and this trapped emotions works like a wall um anywhere in our body um if this wall is present the free flowing the energy that should be flowing through our body stops it stops and or has to find a way around it or above it and with every time we get triggered again that is related to that trapped emotion it um grows it's almost like the monster in the closet. The more you feed it, the bigger it gets. And when we hit a point in our life where we get stuck, like really, like we try everything, we physically do whatever it takes, we get help everywhere, we spend a whole bunch of money into programs, and nothing happens, most likely it is related to those trapped emotions because um, – Again, spirituality or spiritually, your body is not in the free flow of life. Something is stuck. And again, you can inherit it. I had people that had most of their trapped emotions inherited from even their grandparents. Like It can go that far back. And that has been researched as well a lot. And um, that is something to look at. So if you really try whatever it takes and you can't even pick yourself up anymore, like you tried everything, you might want to consider that there's really something energetically inside of you that needs to be removed, um, for you to step into it. A good example. Um, there was a time where I really struggled with taking the next level financially in my business. I was like, oh gosh, I don't know, like I get stuck. I feel like I don't have enough time. I don't like it. I just, just blood toad. And my coach said, no, I don't think so. There's something else. So since I'm an emotions clearing practitioner, I did it on myself. Um, and I realized that there was a trapped emotion related to my money story. I released that. And the next day I gained three clients and made $10,000 within one day. Uh, I had other clients that did something similar or experienced something similar, and that can be on any level. It, it could be from your relationships and how you respond to other people. That is a factor of success in your business or in your life in general. It could be your money story. It could also be health. And um, one thing that I want to mention, especially with younger people now, we see that they choose dream over integrity. So you need to be aware of in what area in your life are you out of integrity? Is it your health? Is it your relationships? Is it your finances? Because whatever you're trapped or where you where you feel like stuck in your life, um, it's a reflection back to you. Anything that is happening to you is a reflection of your inside world. And it's something to take a look at. For example, if you feel like you're not making enough money, do you are out of integrity with your finances? Do you have accumulated a bunch of debt? Are you continuing to borrow from other people? Um, things like that you need to take care of before you can set out that energy of making more and receiving more. It's like, I know we talked about not religious, but in the Bible talks about to be a good steward, you will be 
blessed with more. You have to be a good steward to be blessed with more. And that goes for anything in your life. If you take good care of your health, you will be blessed with more. If you take care of the people around you, you will be blessed with more. The bigger your movement is going to be. If you take care of your finances and be responsible, you will be blessed with more. And again, that also means your inside world. And if there's something emotionally going on inside of you, the trust that, that keeps you from really following in faith and trusting, um, then again, you're out of integrity. And every time you're out of integrity, you hit a roadblock. Isabel, thank you for sharing those (laughs) really awesome insights. You put a lot into that answer and so many takeaways (laughs) just in that one answer. We still have a few more questions to go. And um, when we do feel those moments where we need that inspiration, it's great to get that inspiration. There are some people, though, who... uh, they're not letting the faith in and this is it's very unfortunate to see this happen and for people who don't fully have that faith in themselves Mm -hmm. what do you believe holds most of those people back from that level of faith where they believe they can do what they aim to do um well it depends on the person and what they've gone through obviously as child our childhood really imprints our beliefs and our focus. And so whatever we have learned from our parents, it could be their story, um, their stories. That is something we take with us. We make our own as children. Um, If I look at my son, he's almost four. He's highly, highly intuitive. And sometimes he acts in a way where if I wouldn't have the knowledge, I would shut him down because like, oh my gosh, don't, don't talk about that or don't act like that. And we know that as children, we, we hear that a lot. Um, guys, for example, don't cry, man up. Like those are all things that shut us down. So if someone doesn't have the faith or just can't seem to get to that point where they really believe in themselves and their ability and whatever they are called to do really is for a greater good. Um, it is important to look back and what are the stories in my mind that I'm still connecting with? What is the, the belief system that I have created over all those years that I have taken on from my parents or even from my grandparents? What have been experiences in my life? And again, with all of those events, there can be trapped emotions connected to it. Um, Dr. Bretley Nelson actually says that each one of us has about 300 trapped emotions. And let me tell you, I have some clients where we have released those <laughs> and then they continue taking on new stuff. Um, but and there's always a process. But really, if someone can't just at, not at any point get to that place of trust and faith, then there is a lot of internal work to do because without it, you will not go anywhere. I say to my clients every time, if you cannot get where you want to go emotionally, if you cannot connect to that emotionally and feel it like it is already there, you will never get there physically because you continue to emotionally sabotage your success. It is amazing how, as you've been communicating with us throughout this episode, that our inward thoughts really do reflect what happens in the outward world and how emotionally uh, the way we feel at that level will make a big difference in our output and our ability to achieve our goals. And part of any goal is the challenges that we have to embrace. You've talked about Mm -hmm. several of your challenges already, but I'm wondering if you could focus in on one big challenge that you faced on your journey and a powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. Uh, Yes. Actually, one of... um well, there, there are two, but I think, okay, the other one probably relates better um, to your audience, I would think. Um, when I was at this point of almost giving up, where I was like, okay, God, I don't know what you want me to do here in the U.S. If you don't want me here, then please just tell me right away and I'll go back to Germany. I don't have to be here. I'm 28 years old. I had have no family. I have no money. I never really had a job. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Somehow I always had money though. I have no idea really how looking back, but I always was provided for. But when I, when I was at this point where I had to go to Canada, um, I was, um, 
accepted into IUPUI, but I couldn't afford it. Um, Indiana University, Purdue University, I got into the master's program. I couldn't afford it. 60000 was impossible. I would never get even a loan or anything. Um, so I had to tell them, and they said, well, since you're from Germany, you can go to Germany, and you can go to Canada, and you come back on the waiver program where you can stay for three months and you can try to figure out what you want to do, find a job, get an assistantship, et cetera, et cetera. I was so desperate. I was so broken. I was so close to just giving up. I was like, I, I, I feel such like such a failure and loser in everything I've done. If I look at all my friends, they have family, they, they have a job, they have a home, they have money. I don't have any of that. I'm still traveling. And um, in Canada, when I finally was there, there was a officer. He's like, oh, I'm not going to deal with your case. Uh, it's too much gray area. I'm not going to. You just have to book a flight to go back to Germany. I'll do that right away. And I literally broke down. I had a friend with me. She, she supported me emotionally. I broke down. And then I was just literally bleeding with God. I was like, this is enough. I'm done. And... Um, and then another officer came. He's like, let me take a look. Let me take a look. I'm going to look at that and see what I can do for you after three hours. He came back and he said, I found some loopholes and I think we can make it work. But you have to you have to promise me that you will not do anything illegal. And I said to him, I will not. I promise because it really would destroy my whole dream of what I'm supposed to do. Like I wouldn't be able to stand on stage because there would always be people following me like, Oh, are you illegal? No, I'm not. Um, but that was such a breakdown for me where once I let go of control and just let go of the attachment of the expectations I had, I was so attached to, to how I thought it is supposed to work out. Once I let that go, things came together like in, in no time. Within literally a month, I was married. And again, I'm still happily married with a little boy. I do the work that I do that I've always that I had this physical dream of, like I, I saw myself doing it and now I do exactly that work. But once I let go and let go of the attachment and how I think and believe things were supposed to work out, that's when just things unexpectedly came together for a greater good. Like literally, it's just like within the shortest amount of time. And like I struggled so much, so all those years and, and believing that, the dream was worth the fight for. But at the same time, I wanted to keep that integrity. I didn't want to make myself dependent on other people financially. And again, somehow I always was able to make exactly the money that I needed. Um, but again, I realized every time it got hard, I didn't trust myself. Every time it got easier, it was that moment when I really trusted my intuition. And nowadays in, in the world that we're in, where there's so much sabotage and control and especially younger generations who where we see the awakening and we know that because depression is rising, suicide rate is rising. And that is all because of overstimulation and that is connected to a spiritual awakening where they feel the purpose um, that becomes even more important that we trust and turn within if we really want to see a difference on the outside because we cannot rely on on people in authority to actually support us because they are so afraid to lose their authority that they rather try to control you. So that is another reason why it is so important to to really trust your intuition. And that was for me the, the, the turning point. Like when I let go and trusted and just, okay, I don't have to be attached. Then that's when things worked out. Isabel, thank you for sharing with us that big challenge and the powerful lessons that you learned during that challenge. And another thing that I love asking guests is, well, just to give some background, I'm a really big bookworm. I'll read as many books as possible. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with that in mind, I'm wondering if you could recommend three books for us that would grow our business and or help us strengthen our faith. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I I know you heard me on on Entrepreneur on Fire, so you pretty much know my answer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, okay. So there, for one, there's my book. You definitely should get it, just because for the reason I wrote it. Um, the Power of Faith, True and Success. But no, really, it is a good book, especially fa- for a foundational, simple understanding of how our body and our mind is connected and how we can use it to our advantage. Um. I have really, I really have trouble even telling you more books because to be really honest, I always forget the author and the title. I have those books, like we have a huge shelf, like a a library of books, and I never remember any of the authors or the titles. It's the same with music. It just doesn't stay in my mind. But what I really want people to encourage, there are really amazing books out there, like about business. You can find them anywhere. I love Wayne Dyer books for personal development and really the spiritual growth, the trusting part. Love, love, love him. So any book of him that you can get a hand on, read it. Um, Then again, mine. And the third, I'm not going to say a a book, actually, I really want to encourage people to be very selective in what they read. Because even books have energy. And sometimes we read so much that there is an information over stimulation. Um, And then we don't move anywhere. We forget to trust because we feel like, oh, well, they do it this way. They suggest it this way. And maybe this is another way how I'm supposed to grow and do my business or my life. And so we buy into all those different beliefs instead of really trusting ourselves again You are a renegade. You will never do things like anyone else. And that is important to understand that not everything we read really is for us. And most of us forget that. We read it and then we feel like we have to implement it. We have to do this and we have to buy into this. And that's when we stop. At some point, it just gets much. Reading is important. I love to read. Again, we have like a whole library of books. My husband is an avid reader. Um... But I also have been become really, really selective. So if I find a book that I that I feel like I'm really interested in, I tune in with myself and I ask myself the question, is this book for me at this time in my life? And if I hear a clear yes, I'll read it and ask again the question, how can I go deeper with what I read? What is coming for me? Like really opening those spiritual channels um, of wisdom that can come through all of us and being really selective in what we read. So that's kind of the, the third book suggestion, <laughs> your intuition. <laughs> Isabel, thank you for those book suggestions and interesting insights on reading. I mean, the, the content we read definitely has a big impact on us. I mean, some of it could be like uh, how to get more Twitter followers, how to get more Facebook followers. But if you really want to see this, read the news. I mean, like, I wouldn't recommend reading it for long, but yeah. uh, it usually takes a negative side of things. So that's just one example of how like, you pointed out very nicely how the content we read really has mm-hmm. a big impact on us. Yes, definitely. And uh, I'm very appreciative of all the insights you shared. Before I give you that plug where you can share with us where we can find you, I've asked you a bunch of questions throughout this interview, and I'm wondering, what is one question that you believe we need to be asking ourselves more often? Um, what is one question we need to ask ourselves more often? What do I need? And that is not meant in a selfish way or a self-centered way, but what is it that I need to serve a greater good? I don't think we ask ourselves that question. Usually it either turns into a selfish way of this is what I need and this is what I'm going for. Um, I'm going to kill everyone in the way (laughs) to getting there. That is not what I mean. Really ask yourself, what is it that I need right now um, to serve a greater good? If we are centered and grounded in how we say it in the woo-woo world, (laughs) um, centered and grounded And really in alignment with who we are, we can serve a greater good. Uh, We can serve in a much bigger capacity. So the question that we don't ask ourselves enough is, what do I need in this moment? Isabel, 
Thank you for sharing that great question and for sharing all of your great insights throughout this episode of the Breakthrough Success Podcast. And before we go, um, for everyone wondering, where can we find you on the web? Yes, I'll make it really, really easy for everyone because I hate complicated. (laughs) And so you can just go to my website, isabelhunt.com, I-S-A-B-E-L-H-U-N-D-T. Don't forget the D, D-T D-T.com. You can find how to join my Facebook group, World Visionaries United. You can find how to connect with me on social media. You can look at uh, everything I have there, services and all of this fun stuff. All right, Breakthrough Success listeners, those links and the show notes will be at markguberti.com slash E79. Isabel, it was such a pleasure to have you on the Breakthrough Success podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. To never miss an episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whatever player you are using. If you are a regular listener and haven't done so already, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this podcast a review or a rating. Two ways you could do this are through markgaberti.com slash iTunes or markgaberti.com slash Stitcher. That ends this episode. Don't forget, dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today. Want your tweets get retweeted to my 360,000 Twitter followers? All you have to do is say something nice about the Breakthrough Success Podcast and include the link markgaberti.com slash iTunes. Once you've posted that tweet, Email me, mark at markguberry.com, and I will retweet your tweet to my 360,000 followers. This podcast is a production done by Mark Guberty. For more insights, head on over to markguberty.com. <laughs>